Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Cocktails After Dark. Today we're going to do a cocktail out of this peculiar little cocktail book called Mama's Recipes for Keeping Papa Home. Um, it's undated. It is an advertising giveaway. Um, it's compliments of the OCTC Blanche and Company importers um, in New York City. And so you kind of read through this book and you can see the advertising and you can see the products that they're calling out are products that this company imported into the United States. Um, and it, there's a whole range of these little cookbooks. And so what you would do is if you imported or were a brand, you could go to the company that made these and say, can you stick our brands in the recipes? We want these recipes, stick our brands in, have it printed and give it away as advertising. Um, this is sometime in the late 1890s, maybe as late as 1915 but probably no later than that, um, based on what's in here. And we're gonna do something called the East India Cocktail. And it seems like a cocktail where it's kind of like, let's just see if we can throw everything into the glass and maybe it'll taste good. So we're gonna start out with uh, three dashes of raspberry syrup. This is our homemade raspberry syrup. Really easy to make. Then it calls for two dashes of Caroni bitters. Okay, before I talk about the bitters, the raspberry syrup, it is just a one-to-one -one simple syrup that I made and I steeped uh, about 500 grams of raspberries in it, squashed the raspberries up, strained the raspberries out, and you have raspberry syrup. Really easy to make, plays a lot in early cocktail books. Now back to the bitters. It calls for Caroni bitters and the company that made this, this little cocktail book they were the importers of Caroni bitters. Um, Caroni is no longer available. They fell into a whole lot of legal trouble with Angostura because the manufacturers of Caroni bitters, I tried to read through the legal documents. It gets really sort of obtuse, but they were infringing on the, the, um, the trademarks of Angostura, but essentially very much the same type of bitters, an aromatic bitters two dashes of maraschino. What is a dash? Nobody knows. Well, actually, Mr. Embry knows, but he knows a lot of things. Now we come to the curacao. I know, so many ingredients, so much to talk about with the ingredients. We come to the curacao. It calls for red curacao. And today, you go to the liquor store, you buy a red curacao, it is literally Curacao with red food dye in it, it is, it is red. In this time period, it was not red. The red referred to the ribbon on the bottle, which referred to um, the quality of the contents of the bottle. So you can see here, Grand Marnier has a red ribbon and it says right on the bottle, Cordon Rouge. So um, here's a, I'm gonna throw up on screen, newspaper article from 1894 that talks about the several varieties, green ribbon, white ribbon, red ribbon, and then all of the subdivisions of whether it's dry, really dry, sweet, semi-sweet, so on and so on. So in this time period, um, there was a much wider variety of curacao available than just curacao and blue curacao that you get today. The colors actually meant something. So we're gonna use the, uh, the Grand Marnier and we need two dashes of curacao in each glass. Don't want to overpour. There we go. Now we come to the brandy. I'm going to use an American brandy in this mixer. Uh, two and a half. And in this mixer, I'm going to use some cognac. And we'll ice. Now 
and stir. Okay. Strain these out. This is the American brandy. And this one is the French cognac. And French cognac is just brandy with a better marketing department. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Hey, friends. Hey, Glenn. It's, hello, so we have, we have cognac. Yeah, so it's, this one is and cognac. And brandy. And this one is American brandy. Okay, and um, a lot of other things. Yeah, and so twist of <clears throat> lemon peel over the top. Let's see. Oh, look at that. You can see the... There you go. All right. Oh. It's got a lot of flavors. It's a lot of flavors. It's a lot of... It's got a fruity kind of flavor and a... There's so much going on in there. The bitters really stand out too. The Angostura? Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, good. I'm glad you like that one because I like this one better. That works out perfect. <laughs> Perfectly, I should say. This one's much better to me. Mm-mm. -mm. I like this one better. This one's just a little bit sweeter, which I like about it. Which is the which is the brandy, yeah. I guess. Um, hmm. Okay. I kind of like that. I, I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I was choosing, I would choose this one. But you know, it's a nice drink. It's I was concerned about all these flavors. Well, and I, for this one, it really I mean the, the the brandy or the cognac is a major component. These are just little bits and little bits and little bits but they all seem to add up into something it's, that's really nice it's like adding little bits of spices to something it, yeah it, it's all these tiny flavors together create something different yeah i throw marmite in a beef stew not because i like the taste of marmite i don't but because i like the, the flavor that it brings out in everything else yes and lifts it up and this is this is sort of working in that in that that, that way yeah. it's like adding spices to a to a mix yeah so it's play with the brandies or the cognac um, depending on on what you what you're looking for, there's so many that. And you I can have do. to imagine the ratio is very close in all of these, and so yeah. a subtle difference between any of them would change yeah. the flavor profile. Definitely, definitely. And so, and when you start playing with curacaos in today's marketplace, there are some curacaos that are so incredibly sweet. There are lots that they different... would completely change the flavor of of what's happening here. So you know, have fun with it. Yep, it's a pretty good cocktail. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> See you again soon.